Oh, there. Why is it so tranquil? Why is this music so peaceful? Ah. Ah. What a mess back there. I gotta clean that up. Okay. Um, hello. Um, it's me. It's been kind of a busy week. Some things I want to check up on. Um, Life is Yours Network is terrible. That's a sad story. <laughs> sad story. Okay. Um, so we kind of got sidetracked from Industrial Tax Army we're working on all of the MIDI stuff. And I'm still into that and I made good progress on that. But I did get some parts, so I thought we would just do this. Here's what I've decided. Let me get Fusion up. We've been doing a bad job of selecting the wallpaper. One day we just need to write a good wallpaper tool, like a little wallpaper buddy in some language or another. Probably makes sense to just write it in, write it in C sharp, I guess. Seems like the easy way to do it. I mean, we could get some socket library or, or not even socket library, I guess, just like some HTTP request library, something like that. We could do a thing. Uh, did we do that? We could do a Cloudflare worker where we just query the Cloudflare worker and it just automatically does all the annoying uh, on Flash API stuff. Okay, so here is where we are with this thing. I should probably shave, but my, my beard's getting a little poofy. Maybe I should just keep the poofy beard. Like this. Poof it up a little bit. Go for volume. I do not have a very robust beard, especially in this region. Uh, in this region here. But what if I do this? We have a very Portland look. How about that? Hmm? We like that? Um, get some volume there. I don't know. I don't know about this. What is that? What is this? Oh, it's, I have hair from my head tangled into my mustache. That's cheating, actually. Can't do that. Okay. Oh, it's a little too much volume for me. Let's go over here. Some of the music got real jazzy. Um. Okay. Oh my gosh, rendered senseless. It's, if it isn't rendered senseless, how's it going? If you looked at it, I'm sure you've seen all the crazy new um, chat GPT stuff. When can I look forward to to uh, to all of that in rendered senseless? You won't even have to be a host anymore. Just let, let chat GPT be the host, easy. I won't even have to stream anymore, easy. Okay, this mu this music is too jazzy. This is not. We don't need like Sunday morning jazzy. It's called love in Chinatown for some reason. Go serendipity. Okay, so ooh, smart. So anyone can control anything. Although someday you're gonna like, I'm gonna tune in and I'm not gonna know what's going on because the 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 host is gonna be AI. The audience is going to be AI. I'm going to be AI. Like. Oh, really? Bold. Bold. I mean, sometimes it's tough. Like, sometimes it's a terrible idea to rebuild things from scratch. But sometimes you build something to figure it out. And you realize, like, the way I built this was crazy. But now, I know how to do it. Or that's what you think, at least. That's what you tell yourself. Um, well, I, I'm excited for it. Rendered Senseless continues to be, I think, the best thing on Twitch. Ever. If you would just get the host in a bikini. No, I got it. And I mean, I liked, I, you know, there's there's just, diff there's no right way to do it. You were very much, it seemed like, oh, you had ideas. Let's just get those ideas in. Even if it was, everything was a little spaghetti-ish, but hey. Okay, so this thing. It's been a bumpy road because I wanted to learn new things on it, which obviously probably makes it annoying to watch and I don't know what I'm doing, but I feel like I got a handle on uh, using Fusion 360 for PCB design. I feel like I have dusted off as much as I ever knew, like just how to do a basic schematic, make it all work, figure out how to do that in the software, and then with these tools, lay out the PCB. I feel like it's pretty good. I've done it 80 times at this point because I could not decide on a microcontroller. 
I'm mostly pleased with this at the moment. Like, I feel like it generally is not a it's not a terrible P P PCB, not the best. But there's still some things that are like a little off because I just don't quite know what I'm doing in Fusion. But you know, I feel like it's not bad, and I really have done it a lot of times because I keep not deciding which microcontroller to use. And the decision I made was to not decide. What? I thought we could go to 3D PCB view. What's going on, everybody? Switch, push to 3D PCB? Huh? No? We're just not gonna do that? Where is that? That's you, right? Why wouldn't that open? Okay, so this is where we are now. It's such a simple board. It is such a simple board, but you know, you gotta start somewhere. And it was a reasonable way to learn new software. I have it in a little assembly with the current board I'm gonna use. So, on the current board, I went back and forth so many times. We tried that Tiny S3 when we were doing the Matter stuff. Or sorry, we tried the Feather S3, the Tiny S3. I did try, a, I was thinking about a regular Raspberry Pi Pico. I was thinking about, um, that little Raspberry Pi, not yeah, yeah, uh, RP2040 board from Adafruit. And in the end, what I've decided makes the most sense, now that I really kind of understand it, is a Feather based board. And Feather is just like a board spec. Like it's a shape and general specification for what the pins do. And I think I've got it figured out, I think. Now the thing that's pretty annoying about this, you know, it's so the idea is like, okay, you can have this feather board and this one has an RP2040. You can have a feather board that has an ESP32. You can have, you know, there's different feather boards. There's even multiple ones that I have that are ESP32 S3s. One made by Adafruit and one made by that Adafruit and one made by that unexpected maker. So I like that idea because in theory it means like, okay. While matter sucks, I'm just going to use the Raspberry Pi for the um, MIDI host because I was having, even though it should be possible, whatever, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, that was getting annoying, let's say, with uh, the ESP32. And in theory, now the, th the thing that's kind of an issue is one of the things I really wanted to try to maybe do is, is choose a board that would let me USB host, which the Raspberry Pi board should let me do. The Feather should let me be a MIDI host. I haven't tried that yet. That's something we need to try. Um, but if we look at whatever it is, add a fruit, tiny USB. I think I, that might be the only board listed that is listed as capable of being a host stack. Yeah, there is initial work in progress host for this core. And it has this programmable programmable IO implementation. So I, I don't exactly know what that entails. I haven't really looked at it. I'm very curious about it. Um, But I think that would be like the next step here. MSC host. Yeah, I just am. Um, I don't think there's an example, unfortunately. These are weird examples. Wait, where's the rest of the examples? Oh, just examples. Um, What I just, what I don't think is in here is a MIDI host. Um, and if we can't do it that way, then it has to be a Raspberry Pi, whatever. So, um, which, it, which it currently is. I mean, that's, we have that Raspberry Pi set up. But I am really curious about, I just wish there was an example. bit banging. Oh, this is doing both. Okay, so let's do a roll. 
I guess this is where it's kind of trying to do both things. Two consecutive GPIOs. It's GPIO 20 and 21. So that's the host object. So what I don't know is that um, if this can, if the MIDI library can host. I, I would kind of assume so. Um, but I don't know. So that's a bit of a can of worms that I want to try to figure out. Um, the thing that gets annoying is like, if we want to talk, it's just a, uh, whatever, it's a can of worms. Like being able to talk on the internet with that thing. I don't think there is a feather currently that is a feather that is uh, an RP2040 with wireless capability. So a Pico W, for example, in the feather format, but I don't know, that's a separate, that's a separate concern. We're concerned about this right now. So the one thing that I do wanna uh, possibly touch up on this PCB is um, a couple of the pin choices and it's a little annoying because I believe that pen 25 on this particular board is the LED pen, and I would just kind of like to be able to use the LED pen. And then there's also a, uh, let me find this thing. And then there is also a little NeoPixel buddy on this, this here board. And, I think it is, I think in both cases, the LED pin and the NeoPixel pin are pins that I'm using for something else. And something that is just like a bit confusing here, unfortunately, is like navigating which pins are which. Um, like this is GPIO, well, the NeoPixel is GPIO 16, I guess. Not that I need the NeoPixel, but the onboard LED, It's really confusing because it's actually labeled as pin 13 here, but I don't think that's right. Because that's GPIO 13, that says 13, but I don't, I, I don't think that's true. So can we look at like, um, Pinouts, is there something about the LED here? Okay. Above the pin labels. See, so it says this little pin is controllable in CircuitPython code or .LED. It doesn't say what the actual pin is. And that's, that is a bit confusing, but let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Cause there is um, a define for like board pin, LED, whatever, whatever, whatever. So maybe we can hunt that down. So, So these are just straight up Arduino includes. But if we wanted something like, um, I think I'd started to do it in here somewhere. This. Like, who is the LED built in pin on this board? It's pin LED, and this takes us to common for the feather. It is pin 13. And the NeoPixel is pin 16. So we need to not use pin 13, which is good, because I already. 
I already went back and changed that actually because I just have some like deeply ingrained Arduino idea of don't ever do anything with the LED pin. So in this case, the LED pin is here. It's pin four on this jumper. And so I did skip that. So that is good. Pin 16, which is straight up GPIO 16. So we need the, uh, we need like the actual board layout. This guy. So, hello, can I move you side? How do you do that? How do I move sideways? Great. Um, where's, where is that? Wait, was it on the other thing? Hello? I guess I don't want that. Come back, go here. You, okay, that's very tiny. Thank you for that, but it is very tiny. Interesting. So GPIO 16 is not exposed at all. Okay. Interesting. So on this feather that I have, this other one, like the, um, the Adafruit ESP32 feather, I want the S3 one this what so pin seemingly we are still pin 13 here um that's a lot of stuff so that is seemingly still pin 13 so that's fine so we would still skip that this one has neopixel Power is GPIO 21 and NeoPixel is GPIO 33. So with this board layout, we'd be skipping 13, which is fine. And we have one, two, three, four, five on this side. So that's okay. This side is quite different. That with this one, GPIO 16 is open here. But that seems to be okay because GPIO 13 is in the same place. We're not using it. This uses GPIO. Where is the NeoPixel? On that board. Where is where is that board? I thought I had one of those. Dude, I do seem to have one. So if I were a NeoPixel and I was on this board, I would be. What? Where would I be? USP 30, yeah, really S3. So where, what's the NeoPixel on this board? Oh, there's a teeny tiny little NeoPixel here. Okay, so I think I'm actually okay with this. That is on by default, the Zippo Lord file is just below. NeoPixel power. This one's uh, okay. So how would one do that? Let's maybe look at the um, example in Arduino. Okay, so actually maybe we don't need to make any changes to this. Maybe it's already perfect. So the thing we need to do is I started to do like just a little breadboard buddy layout with this. I'm not crazy about the color of this. I mean, I don't mind it being pink. I'm just not really crazy about this particular pink, but oh well. I think it's going to look good with the purple that I chose. Um, so how do I, how do I talk to the NeoPixel on this board? I wonder. So if we were an example for Hmm. 
Well, I guess it's going to be associated with the... <clears throat> okay, I want to be back to this one. Oops. I think I looked at this, and I don't think it actually did have in its little Arduino setup. Yeah, it does just a LED blink, but it doesn't actually talk to the NeoPixel. So, <clears throat> interesting. So if we were to go here and we were going to just like simple, Which pin? So in this case, it's 16. And we only have one. And we have something going on here and we have a feather 2040. So maybe that works. I'm just curious about, not that I want to like include the whole NeoPixel library. Really, I just wanted the status LED, but I'm a little curious. Um, can we do the thing? It just would have, at least to like to have an indicator light on to know that something is happening. But it would be sort of cool to have the NeoPixel. Um... Do a thing. I do truly have no idea. Okay, that is just extremely green. So that seems to work. So you do a set pixel. Do you have to clear? I guess what it's doing is like, it's supposed to you know be animating green along the line. That is so extraordinarily bright. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess a couple things we could do. It'd be kind of cool to like, while a node on is happening, turn on the NeoPixel, while node off is whatever, 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 but, um, okay. You know, maybe. But let's just start with this, because this will hopefully just work, right? That we want to use the built-in LED pin. And this is not actually, I should change this to not be the Pico, because this is not a Pico anymore, really. Which confused me a lot last night because the pins don't match, which should have been obvious. Even though it's the, both the, they're both RP2040s, the pins don't match. Okay, I might have to put this in bootloader mode, we'll see. Oh, that worked. So that green light should turn off and stop blinding me. The green light is still on and is still blinding me, but now the red light is on. So, <laughs> um, Let's just put in. Okay, so we'll just do, basically we'll put this as the first thing in setup just to say like, hey, we know code is running if the little red light turns on. And then maybe at the end, we'll turn the NeoPixel a green that is not quite so blisteringly green. Okay. Uh, I don't actually know if this is the right order or anything, but okay, now I want pixel also. What are you mad about? Okay. <clears throat> and then what do we need to do? I think we have to like have some kind of start. Yeah. Basically, at the very end of our setup, maybe. Doop, doop, doop. And then I'm not going to do this in a loop to start with, so let's just see how this goes. I'm 
like this. Maybe. And then we'll test the inputs. We gotta set up the inputs, outputs, all that stuff I didn't really do yet. So um Okay, we got a very, very pretty blue color, so that did work. We still want it not that bright because it hurts my feelings and my eyes. Okay, so some things that are missing. So if we go over here to MIDI land, we should be able to see this object here. See a tiny USB MIDI, tiny USB MIDI. So I should be able to hit stuff here and um, this device should know about that thing. So if we were to monitor, so we should be connected here, we should see, yeah. So we're getting node-ons, node-offs, all of that. So that's all good. So we want that to correspond to individual LEDs to be able to toggle them. So when I press, it turns on. When I release, it turns on. Um, similarly, I can, it's still so bright. Um, I can press these buttons, basically, um, and I should get MIDI input, although, very curiously, I seem to not be getting MIDI input. I feel like there's something wrong with this program, actually, because I feel like, I don't know, Windows MIDI is so weird. And I feel like this is easier on Mac OS, but... Let's see if this will connect or if the... Can I go to the website, please? Yeah, it's so strange. I don't know if it's because of something. So we, do we need to stop monitoring or I don't really know what the issue is. Um, or is it because you're mad? Let me switch here. Yeah. So I can see that there. So why can't I see it in Pocket MIDI? I feel like Pocket MIDI has generally worked well for me. Just not seeing any input. Why do you think that is? I'm just, shouldn't matter. Basically I have like all channels selected, all messages selected. I'm not sending control messages, I'm just sending simple note ons and note offs. I should be able to see, definitely connected. Oh, is that because? Let me connect for input, but not output. I don't know. That's unfortunate. It's a little irritating. Um, why can't I connect to this? Is it because that makes sense, like because I'm connected here via serial, that it's messing up. I thought I could do both. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Okay, I'm gonna pocket MIDI again. No, we're just angry. I'm gonna close. Chrome. Also, there's, there's web MIDI examples at Glitch we were using, but I was having issues with it. Yeah, like this board's not even showing up here. Pretty frustrating. Okay, let's upload this again and make this light less bright. Which just sucks that I would like to just be able to test this from Pocket MIDI and see both MIDI input and output, and I do not understand why I cannot. up for some reason is Arduino. I'm gonna close Arduino in case it has decided to lock up the port in some way. And let me just be forced to reboot here. Up with that. Okay. The light dimmer. Still bright. Still really bright. Without me, it's 
weird stuff written in Go. Worst life is yours to be the Go expert. Um, do I start using Go? The answer is no. Okay, so... What? Okay, really just focus on making this bright light hurt my eyes less. Okay. It's a little less bright now. Um, when we see a pocket mini, it would be both great to see both input and output. That would be very useful. But I just don't. I can do output now. I feel pretty confident that I'm sending data. From the, the board, I mean. So now if I connect to the USB monitor and I send MIDI data, the board is getting it. So why are my sends not working in this application? But now they're both working in the web MIDI examples. Why? Well, I see them both here, so let's verify that that's true. So um, I can send messages and we're seeing those. And then, yeah, these are me sending data back. Um, It shows the pitch twice. I don't know. This logging doesn't make very much sense to me. Anywho, so the basic thing we want to do now is, is in addition um, to pens for these, we want like indicator A note, which will be 60. And we want indicator B note, which will be 61. <clears throat> and we'll just... million other ways we could do this, but let's just do it with 63, so it's very explicit to find up top. Okay, that's all good. So we'll just have overlap here. to just inc increment a number. I always do it by accident. Then increment number, control plus. Oh. Is that true? Binary. Should I? I know, I do kind of want to play Dwarf Fortress. Okay, we'll check it out. Let me get, I don't think it'll too big, take too much longer to get me through this. Pointer, that yellow keyboard is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Why is it so beautiful? The only thing I'm not crazy about are the, and I realize this is just the rabbit hole that I would be setting myself up for, is the um, key, the yellow type on the keys. I mean, aesthetically, I think it's nice, just functionally, I don't know. Um, I get it. I do use those, you know, I use those sometimes. Honestly, not that much. And I think it's mainly because of them. Because, you know, I have shortcuts, like insert and delete and those kinds of things. Um, 
are explicit modes or like, you know, explicit commands in Vim land. I don't use, I do use page up and down some, but typically like I have those mapped to something else in, um, at least on my laptop. Yeah, I do. So, okay, let's just, let me finish the thing I was thinking of for one moment. Oh, it's a control A, I'm sorry, that's how you do it. Okay, control A to encrypt. That's control A, A, control A, 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 control A, 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 A. Although actually, those are, I'm not crazy about that actually because that that's I'd rather use um, C and then D. Okay, I need like a MIDI chart. For some reason, I don't want to use any uh, sharps or flats. No accidentals. Um, that's fair. I use like Control Left Right or whatever the shortcut is for home end usually. What is it? I guess that's just end of word. What is the shortcut I'm gonna use? One of the things that I know until I'm asked and then the muscle memory fails me. Um, I think it's actually different on my, on Mac. Okay, so I just want like MIDI note. Right, please. I don't know why I don't want any accidentals in this. It's just that's how I'm feeling. I think we actually want. Um, we'll just start at C sixty, and then sixty two, sixty four, sixty five. Sixty-seven, sixty, sixty-two, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-seven, sixty, sixty-two, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-seven. Okay, that's all good. And then this one's going to be a bit wonkier, but it's going to be sixty, sixty-two, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-seven, sixty-nine, seventy-one. But an accidentally increment any of my key, my, my key number. So okay, let's want to look at that keyboard for a minute because what I think I would actually like, and I just haven't seen it. So exploded, seventy-five percent keyboard. I'm so I'm not. I don't know. I like the aesthetics of the super dense seventy-five percent, but I think I like like an exploded. So this is very nice looking to me. I really like the look of this. It just I don't know. It just feels like a little too compact or like other 75s that are a little more squished so there's this new or new to me format that is this exploded 75 that just like it's a little wonky but it gives a little breathing room um what is that one called gravity iq unix is that what you're called what are you called this thing oh it's gorgeous i love it it looks like a prop from the moon from moon It just looks like a keyboard from this movie. That's such a... I, I really liked the... I like this movie is underrated, personally. But I really liked the, the UI. The UI design was incredible. The environment design was incredible. Like, the palette here of these whites and grays with splashes of yellow, I feel like it's very in line with this keyboard like i feel like you could put this keyboard on this uh lunar base and it would seem seem quite at home it is a great movie underrated so um so i think this is lovely and i'm very tempted to get this keyboard the like slight downsides where i'm just sort of like eh. I'm wondering if I could just like open it up and do weird mods, but like I kind of, you know, I've been talking about wanting a fingerprint sensor. I was wondering like, oh, could I mod it so this thing, whatever this thing is, becomes a fingerprint sensor or everybody's putting knobs up here now for the media control, which I think is cool. 
but I'm trying to think like, ah, could I like cram a meteor or a fingerprint sensor in here in some way? The back is like weird, like steel shielding, almost looks like it's designed to pop out in mod. Maybe it is just like a little routed piece of aluminum, actually, now that I look at it, but um, anyway, I love it, but thinking practically, I feel like I could do an exploded Well, right. I mean, it's the the it is kind of like in a weird. I mean, I don't know. I feel like compared to some things, I feel like it's kind of a bargain because some of the keyboards I was looking at were. Yeah, right. It's just like no switches, no keys. I'm not. It is wireless. I'm not totally clear on if it's plugged in, if you're just charging it, or if it will actually work wired, which is kind of important to me. Well, the Keychron 2 is almost the same. So, and also this one doesn't have, uh... okay, this doesn't have software for remapping keys. Uh, it is missing some keys, like it is missing page up and page down. So I would maybe want to like remap some of these keys instead, but seemingly they don't have caught software the way um, Keychron does. But what it just, what I was kind of thinking is like, I feel like I could use an exploded 65% except for one thing. And I feel like if, if the, you know, if I could map it in a reasonable way, I think I would be okay. But I cannot, like the notion of not having back tick and tilde is crazy to me. Like I definitely want, I'm gonna just find a picture that has reasonable, like photo of the layout. Oh, this keyboard's beautiful. So what I would do, if I had one of the, yeah, I mean, I like, these are very beautiful. I don't necessarily need function keys for the most part. Um, what I do need is tilde and back tick. So that's pretty weird to not have that. But what I would probably do is just put escape on caps lock because I like that better anyway, even though it means anytime I touch anybody else's computer, I'm constantly putting everything in caps lock, um, which is not ideal. But other than that, I feel like I could maybe use this. I don't know, this, this feels so cramped down here to me. But maybe I could get used to it. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I tend to do sort of like meta keys on my left hand more often anyway. Um, it's a little weird to not have a function key. This has page up, down, and delete, but not home and end. Care recorder? Care recorder. How's it going, Kyle? Cording. Wait, what does that mean? I can play like chords, like music chords. I can play uh, like multi, multiple keys at once. What are we talking here? Whoa, weird. That's interesting. That seems a little weird that it's at the, like a hardware level and not a, just a piece of software. Interesting. I mean, that's interesting to me. I do have to use other people's computers sometimes. So I am always wary of like hyper specific things, especially when like helping somebody or whatever. It's already bad. Oh no, yeah, okay, don't do it. Um, well, it's already bad. Like I used to be a pretty custom, I would like customize lots of things, custom shortcuts. And then I stopped doing that fully when I had to use other people's computers, whether it's like a contract job or going around helping people or like directing projects or whatever, um, office hours, whatever, I would just would continually just like bang on their keyboard and not be able to do anything. I do it frequently still with, um, cause I do have the escape key re remaps to caps lock on my laptop. I can take my private dongle wherever I want. It just doesn't work if I'm using somebody's laptop. 
That's actually what messes me up. I have weirdly have separate muscle memory for my nice keyboard and for my Mac laptop. And I, I mean, that's kind of works for me because generally something like there's some um, trigger in my brain that is like, okay, you're on a Mac laptop, you need to do this. But I st the, the escape key one is still one that messes me up. Um, anyway, I don't know. Look at this crap. Look at these little beauties. Look at these little gorgeous little creeps. Look at these beautiful monsters. Um, okay, so that key cron I was looking at. I like it. That's not this one. It's the Q1. Or Q12, which is the worst product name possibly ever. The Q1 version 2. This one's a little weird because you don't get a um, right alt effectively, which is a little weird. Um, they do have a model with the knob. It's just the, I mean, I know this is silly and I could obviously get keycaps to look however I wanted, but just out of the box, I think this is a way nicer looking keyboard. Just like the whole enclosure, everything I think is nicer. It's not metal, which I guess is one of the biggest downsides, especially. Oh, is it not the greatest? I mean, they're not outrageously expensive, um, but I feel like, you know, if there was just a thing that I was like, I was gonna open the box and use and not feel the need to you know, fully swap out all the keys, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, I do love the look of this. Oh, actually, is this hot swap? It's probably not, is it? So this does say try mode. So this would seem to imply that I could use this like a normal human and plug it into a device. It is hot swappable. Okay, I'm, I'm mad at them for with their fake little space laptop for not res for like trying to make an attempt at real perspective, but I I think it looks really nice. That the complaints I saw about it, there's a Tom's Hardware review. The complaints I saw about it were like the choice of what keys they cut and what keys they kept. And I don't know much about this. Like, is it an expectation that the manufacturer provides its own remapping software? Because the keyboard I have has like inbuilt options, you know, like this. It's not super fancy, but it's a cooler master where you can like hold key combinations and put it in different modes and all of that kind of thing. Um, okay, so this at least function tab for five seconds. This will at least swap between systems. I don't, I, I guess, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess if there's some like non-manufacturer specific thing, I just kind of like, I would, okay, but it, sorry, is that a configuration that like configures that keyboard? So it's outputting, because I guess what the ideal would be is that it's outputting the key codes I want. Not that this, but you know, not that they're getting remapped in the OS or whatever. Does that distinction make sense? I don't know what the standard is, I guess. I don't know what people would normally expect. I My my ideal is that I'd be able to configure it such that... Okay. Um, my, my hope would be that I could... ANSI only, 
think that's fine. Do I care? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I definitely would prefer to not have some stupid software layer running on my computer that's trying to translate import incoming key. You would think that would be a uh, frequently asked question. It does mention a driver. Backlight on, off, brightness up, down, effect switching. So it's all like client side, I guess. Wind lock, switch between Mac and keyboard. Battery level check. This is not what I want, I feel like. I want, I want, um, I mean, the, 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 the rabbit hole that I continually teeter over is I just need to just build a keyboard. I just need to. And one of the things that has been stopping me, um, okay. Not finished the driver, so you can't remap keys. I don't like the sound of that. I think, well, you know, I'd always wavered on what do I want, what do I want, what do I want? And I kind of feel like with the right, like an exploded 75 or an exploded 65, I just had never seen exploded before. Um, swaps control a but what does that mean does that only swap control and caps lock or are there other can I swap any key This is a review I saw that said you could not remap. At least currently, I'm, I'm pretty unclear on it. I don't really know what the standard is, you know, like what's the... Why is it keyboard shift? 
beautiful. And why... Why does Google show results that do not contain the things I want to see? But is this is this like fully software side or what are we what are we doing here? Can you just tell me what you do? Like, how does this work? Is there no just description of the software? <laughs> just what does this software do? Why would you not say like, hey, this is what our product is. Let us tell you about our product. That is so, I feel like that's really common and really asinine. I feel like if you want, like if I go to a web page, I want to know what this thing is and I want to know how it works. bad product name, hard to search. Yeah, via USB, great, great. It's pretty frustrating. That would really, um, it feels like kind of a make or break thing for me. Okay, not bad. Kind of ugly up here, but I don't have to do that. Looks pretty simple. Is this fake? Why does why does this look fake? Why does this look not real? <laughs> okay, you're telling me I have to build a keyboard to get what I want. You may be right. I mean, then I could build in a... Um, a fingerprint reader, right? so beautiful and it's so close to what I want already it's just so close so close who's got a kit that's all old stuff but let's just see I do see people talk about the Bounce 75 a lot. Ugh. It's 235 just for the... Shit.
What is these tacky brass accents on things? That's a little more bronzy. Not a fan. I see. Well, can we do like steel? I just don't like the look of the brass, really. Aluminum, aluminium. Can we? Uh, can we plate it? That's weird because this is more. I don't like this. I feel like if you're getting this big, you might as well just be, get into uh, TKL land. Key cult. I mean, I feel like if I'm gonna go fully custom, then I have to build it. I feel like that's a requirement. Like I, I just have to, what a pain in the butt. You know, what I would kind of like to do is to have an affordable exploded 75 just to see, like, to make sure I like it. Um, that is straight up TKL. I can see. I know it's tricky. It's difficult. What if it was like a beautiful, sleek, tiny keyboard that then docked inside of something absurd? Um, like the minimalism of this is nice, but it really loses some of the charm of that uh, outer space one. I mean, I could obviously get white and then kind of try to recreate it. I'm tempted to buy that one and have it as a gateway drug. And maybe that's... Maybe that's bad. This isn't as exploded as I would like. I do think I like the, uh, the knob. Cause I've never used the media keys really, but the knob would be kind of cool. Yeah, that could be cool. Just slide in your your uh, 60 percent to have it fully become a normal size keyboard that'd be kind of cool actually mm, okay well I, like this is that this feels so close if I could just do something with the software I mean with the firmware to like do stuff. Yeah, I mean, I just, in this case, really like the look of it. It really adds to the, like, moon control panel aesthetic, in my in my opinion. But, um, yes, you could have a, a big honking knob. So it's just updated a few hours ago. Says it currently lacks it. Does that mean it will get it? I think the RGB looks tacky on this keyboard, personally. Okay, anyway, we're getting so distracted. I, of course I want a moon keyboard, but back to this. So we are assigning individual notes to these. So we want to say, is that this will also get an int note. 
really these could be pipes. Maybe, I don't know. I'll leave them as integers. Really, they could certainly be pipes. They're not that big of a number. I don't know if we're gonna have some uh, complaints about this, but. Okay, and then <clears throat> when we initialize these, we need to do this. Like the Vim multi-line insert, I know I'm like trying to do something weird and combine two. Rd a note. Like I want, you know, Sublime text, um, Sublime text multi-select and Vim everything else. And this extension tries to make that happen, but it doesn't always work the way that I want. No, no, it's got a screen on it. Maybe, maybe. I do, is that actually, oh, I bet that's like an LCD or a, a, like an OLED for a smartwatch. Why, I like, I have all of these selected, right? I'm selected, I hit I, thinking I can go into insert mode but it does not work. I can do I here. I don't know, it just seems to not work right. Button A note. Okay. Oopsie. Wait, I forgot the alphabet. <laughs> Cute. Okay, we have these, we have these. So the thing we want to do, we have a couple options here. So this really could be rolled into, there's really no reason to do this here. Like we could just do this when we process the button because we know what we want the button to do. Like if I wanted some generic button to do whatever. Um, so button process. So we kind of want to just do this and just say like, um, whole thing. And just say like, hey, if the issue would be this dot note and this dot note but with velocity zero and all on channel one. Still do not understand why we're not getting this in pocket MIDI. Because I want it in pocket MIDI and I don't know why it's not there. What's your problem? Okay we could certainly like Make that a little more concise, but <clears throat> I think we just want to do this. I'll just go through process of the buttons. Okay, well we could tidy that up, but I think that does the job, right? And then separately, when we get a note, 
So in this case, process doesn't need an argument. But when we get a note, what do we want to do? Take where it is, though. This is a little tricky as far as like how much handling should we do inside of like event, event handling. Does the handle raw messages, handle start, handle stop. So there's lots of things we can do. So, okay, um, I'm gonna say we're gonna do it like this, I think. Um, and just similarly loop through and process the lights, I think. That was weird. Don't do that. Why would you do that when I only wanted to change you in this one scope? What? What's your problem? Okay, we're gonna loop through the lights and we're gonna add a process and process the lights. And they will need an Arguments. I don't know. Just a question of like, how much logic do I want to off? Oh, it's me messing up caps lock. Now can I not undo? You get in such a weird mode, man. Bummer. Okay. It's like caps lock just does crazy things to them. I just need to fully ditch catch caps lock. I don't ever really want caps lock. Okay, so we want to do this here. And we want to do this here. It's kind of dumb. Um... I'm trying to decide like who to have um deal with it. And I guess I don't really want to do it in that. Oh, it's not like a lot of duplication if we don't. So like I don't know. I think I just want to do this. So if um Just a ref, not a pointer. Because we don't care, as long as it's note on, it's fine. The thing that's weird is the sending of the note. It doesn't let you send a note off, you just like send the note and it's low. If, oh, sorry, it's, it's note off if the velocity is zero. It's not, not really what I would kind of want it to be. Um, so then inside our little light buddy, we 
How do you consider that actually? The pen status. I didn't know that's what that was called. Does that do the job? Press the button release and end here. Silver Bros, but Really, this should be a pen status, huh? Yes, technically. just is a bite, but just for sake of being very explicit. Okay, so we should be reading midi in and out and so on, so on and so forth. So do not understand why pocket midi is not doing what we want it to do. That's not cool. So I understand why that build didn't work. Also not cool. Everything's plugged in. That is the Pico. I do have an error. Maybe I just have an error. Okay, I just can't write programs, I guess. Process is now just void. I think. Process is a little long there, I will say. Are you happy now? So don't look happy. What are you, what are you mad about? Okay, maybe there's a new version of Pocket Mini. Probably not, but you know, maybe. How do I have it installed? MIDI 1.5. 
what version is available. One point six. Okay, let's go ahead and just update it just because we haven't done so in a long time. I want to install it from the install it in the Windows Store. It's telling me to. It's telling me get it from Microsoft. Do I trust that? Can you believe that Kyle tried to get me to install a keylogger? Nice try. Nice try, Kyle. Oldest trick in the book. Oh yeah, here, go to this website and just buy this USB device and put it between your keyboard and your computer. It's no problem. It's not a problem. You're right. It's not a problem. It seems fine. It seems totally safe. Um, oh, should I just buy that keyboard and just um, oh, if I could like, I'm gonna end up building a keyboard, aren't I? It's all your fault. Okay. Do you work now? Port open failed. Great. Port open field. We're off to a very good start. Do I just happen to have... Um... Okay, I've got MIDI keyboard stuff open, so let's maybe close that. It did let me open the input port that time. Okay, let's monitor, see how broken this is. Probably everything's broken, but we'll just, let's try it out. Okay, so this should be, that's pin 13, that's 12. So that's press and release. That's weird, why did I get two? 29, 24, 25, 18. So I think those are correct. So nobody input still, which I don't, I, I really don't understand. Like, is it a filter thing? It seems like I have every possible thing selected, right? I mean, at a minimum, you would really expect node on and node off. Port one, two, port one. Oh, that's kind of weird. I don't think I want to do that. Let's get no input. And my I am getting okay, so let's see. So I have LED on on off. That's LED, that's 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Is that, are those the pins that we think they are? 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. This doesn't go here. Why do you just tell me you can't do that? It's not that hard. Did I just, what? So why did it, it changed it down here? I don't know what you use code. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. And then what did we say? We had 26. Oh, that was the pin I was not supposed to accept. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those are the pins that are just immediately off of ground. Okay. So that should be 26, 27, 28, 29, 24, 25, 18, 18, 26, 27. Okay. That all seems good. Why are we not getting MIDI in? Okay, just sanity check. I guess I will plug in 
a real MIDI keyboard. And say that MIDI in is this launch key. This says launch key MIDI in. It doesn't work. Why does it not work? This is like a full reset every single thing. Input port. Why? Okay, well, at least it's not me, but what is the problem? Oh, nothing works ever? That's sad, because Pocket Mini, I feel like it's good. Oh, it is two words. Sorry. I see sysx messages. I just don't see anything. Right, input port. Looks like this is broken. Try again. Am I using this incorrectly? I really thought this is a thing you could do. I mean, I guess I could. Like my note offs, did I just do that incorrectly? What did I do? I think I didn't do my pin, note, pin mode low. Yeah, this should be set low. <clears throat> what am I doing wrong, everybody? Why can't I see any MIDI in? I don't have any output and I have only this set and I have also this set. Why?
Oh, it seems to be working. It's worth turning lights on now. So we can wire up an LED and try that. Um, what do I do with all the LEDs? All right, this yellow LED, for example, presumably this is high. Source gate drain on the, um, so that should be C3. Or maybe it's not. It's whatever's next to USB power. USB power, oh, we didn't use. Shoot, I forgot. I need to move all these over one pin. That's annoying. Um, Chucks. Well, let's just do that. Too bad life is yours. Can't, uh, oh, we're gonna blow out. Also, don't do this. It's the other thing. Is that, this should just be for 3.3 volts. Okay. My bad, this needs to go high, this needs to go low. You just need to bump over a scooch. So that should be 64. That should be D. Do I turn on this LED? What am I doing wrong, everybody? There's USB power. Did I actually wire up ground? Looks like I did. Is that actually ground? That'd be funny if it wasn't. Appears to not be. Okay, let's try over here. Can we actually see what we're doing? So this would presumably be 13, 12, 11, 10, which in GPIO land, We're not using 13. We're using 12, 11, 10, 9, 6. 12, 11, 10, 9, 6. 12 is actually up there. So this particular pen, 12, 11, 10. So that is D10, it would appear, that we would think would be here. That is D10. So we're setting it high and setting it low. So do I just have this hooked backwards? You are ground. Short lead is ground. Long lead is power. Ground. Power. What am I doing wrong? That looks like that should go high. Could be that I burned out this LED. Possible. So let's try this instead. So just to confirm that this thing turns on, it doesn't turn on. So what's wrong here? turns on. Power, ground, source gate, drain. So C. Pin 12. Source is ground, gate, drain should be the negative lead. By setting gate to high, which when I push this, Seems like I'm doing. That transistor should be source gate drain. Hmm. That's definitely pin 12. 
It's definitely pin 12. We definitely have a ground there. That definitely looks like the gate. So why are we not working here? Let's try this other one. That's pen 11. This should be hold the LED, the lights. So I don't really do this fully yet, but let's think about this for a second. Lights should be low. They're for output and they're low. And when we digital write, we set the status to whatever we say the new status is. Okay. Oh, multimeter o'clock. Oh, now you can't see anything. Just to describe it to you, I'm failing. But I can't tell exactly in what way, which, which way I'm failing. I'm not sure to tell. Okay, check this voltage. From ground to gate, I would expect nothing here. Well, there's like a slight fraction of a volt difference that I don't really understand. That's five volts. This should be three volts if it were high. There's a little discrepancy. And then if I go here and I hit this, I would expect that That is LED, we expect 12 to be going high. So if you're ground and you are pin 12, like you report to be, it sure doesn't act like it's going high. Weird voltage discrepancy. That is ground. Like this pin that's pulled low does not seem low. I'm gonna momentarily disconnect this. Maybe I have this wired incorrectly. Um, seem like that pen is going high. Is that true for all of these? You all like slightly wonkily weird. It kind of seems like you're all slightly wonkily weird. What the heck? Okay, between ground and 3.3 volt pin. About 3.3 volts. Between ground and USB, it's about five volts. So, what's the, uh, 
We're just doing something silly here. Pen mode. I mean, I feel like we had this basically working. Oh boy, what is all this? Get out of here. Not any of this. Why am I seeing seven million? I don't want any of this stuff. Get out of here. Did you open every repository? What the heck? Uh, I'm confused. I have no idea why VS Code has chosen to do this very helpful thing for us. Oh, this is tedious. Weird. Okay, what did we have previously? Because that kind of sort of worked, right? All we did was say, this since the earliest example, so we may not even have the shoot. Wow, nuts. Never mind. Okay, and just to be clear, that really is 12. Like, is that actually true? Is D12 really? Is that really GPI 12? GPI 12? How does that anything ever work? Why? Um. So in this case, 12 is 12. 11 is 11, 10 is 10, 9 is 9, 6 is 8. That's the only one that's a weird one. Well, we used 8. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. And we are matching here. So we're saying set the pin status if it matches. So we wouldn't see the logging. So on handle, make sure we're not like instantly setting it low or something. So when <clears throat> we get the note on and then we set them high, we get the note off and we set them low. Only if the note matches the pitch, which seemingly I guess we don't really know that. Because am, am I logging that in here? Well, yeah, we are logging this, right? So. We're saying what pin we're setting. Um, so. What? Still annoyed by that midi end thing. Ignore it for the moment. Okay, so if we monitor to this and we go back to old pocket buddy. And we say this, we are definitely seeing light on off here, right? We definitely are seeing pin 12 is supposed to be set too high. Okay, just for, yet again, more sanity checks. So let's pull this board out of this breadboard and just see like, 
maybe I have something miswired, or maybe I have some solder issue. So between, what was the mess? Okay, sorry. Between 3.3 volts and ground, not checking the velocity right this is all channel one so I would expect pin 12 to be high that's what I would expect will it be true I don't know What silly thing am I doing this time? What, what nonsensically silly thing am I doing this time? It really is just a digital write of this pen, which I've just output here to this status, which I have output here. I have said, oh, am I not initializing these as output? We only did that for the buttons. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Right. Okay, hopefully this is all this. It's not initialized for output, you can't output. And it wouldn't be pulled low, so. I mean, I don't even know what the default state of those pins are. Like, what would it be doing by default? I don't know the answer. Okay, ground and U is now straight up low. So that's good. Okay, I'm, I feel like that was the problem, which was silly, but like manageable. Okay, so now if I plug this doodad into power, and then I ground it through the drain. Hopefully C3. Not working. Okay, let's try this again. Upload this. Make sure this actually does work. And then ground it, does. Source gate drain, that's the drain. We're draining the source in that case is ground, which appears to work. Let's monitor this. Let's go over here, make sure we are outputting here. Oh, we're not seeing output here. I mean, let's update our port list, try again. Okay. Hooray! Oh, it worked for a second, and then it stopped working. Okay, so that's working. So that means that C3 is working to put the transistor, or the MOSFET, I guess, in this case. I don't guess, I know. Okay. And then D is working. Very good news. Um, now we will switch to LED, which I believe I, in this case, the wiring's opposite. That goes ground, and this is power. C, D, E. E is 10. Oops, E. So why would that not work? 
That's wired for 3.3 volts, so let's just make sure this LED works. I don't really seem to. It's possible I've killed this LED. Or have wired it backwards, as I, as I like to do. Okay, maybe this LED is dead. <clears throat> I'm not going to fuss with it at the moment. Try this green one instead. If you were ground, nah, if you were power, the safe way to do this. If you were ground and you were power, the might. Okay, that's working. Not as bright as I want, but it is working. So that's E. This should be F. And this should be G. Okay, those do work. There is some part of me that is tempted to switch those out with Neopixels. Is that a thing that exists? Five millimeter? I think I need to stop and just like finish this one day. Finish this project one day. Um, a lot more freaking pens. Okay. Okay, let's just. I don't know that I don't think I want to do this, but I just want to think through for a second what it would look like if I did want to do that. Because um, I can see like actually a sort of an advantage um, in that I could daisy chain them along if I wanted to, you know, and then have fully controllable lights on them. But I think I don't know. This, this project just needs to stop one of these days. It needs to end. So I think I'm gonna say that I'm not gonna do that. It's tempting. They're cuties. They're quite cute. And it really is just power and ground and a data pin. So we run power and ground on its own little harness and then we would just really have one cable in. But I think I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do it. Okay, so we tested all of that. Did we test the buttons? No, because we can't get MIDI in. And what's its face? Even though we can get MIDI in elsewhere. So that's a bummer. I, I mean, some part of me wonders like, oh, do I just have this misconfigured in some way? But the fact that I'm not seeing it from there, I just don't, I don't think so. Okay, let's stitch this for a moment. Let's go back to the web MIDI example. And so we should be able to see here. So this should be, <clears throat> excuse me, 20, uh, yeah, 60, what, 62? 64, 65, 67, 69, and 71. Yeah. Okay. That does work. So this doodad, wired as it exists right now in my hands, does do the thing. Um, that's cool. So, yeah, really... I could do the NeoPixels on the... Could do the NeoPixels on the front, but I don't think I want to. I don't even really have like grand plans for this. It was just like starting this idea of digital tax for me. I think I want to do something crazy and make a concrete base though. Probably a terrible idea.
Yeah. I don't think it's a very good idea. But... I think I might do it anyway. I don't know. Okay, so that's all good. So the real question is, are we done then with this PCB? Like, am I, am I, are we just doing it? So the way I have it currently is the indicators just independently get Power and ground, LEDs independently get power and ground. They're all very simple, just two little wires, two little, and they'll just be kind of harnessed together. It's maybe a bad idea to do this like this and have these connected rather than split. And then this whole side is kind of a big question. I mean, I could do this. This would work. I could definitely do this. Um, one, two, three, four. That's a six. That's a four. I'm pretty sure I have like the Molex connectors. That way, that way. Really, yeah. you know I don't know though. Is it those Molex connectors that you can do? I don't think you can two side by side. I just don't know if it actually fits. I think it doesn't, but maybe it does. That would be cool. That would make like certainly a bit easier. How many nail headers anywhere? Okay. Like, so it's to say if, as an example, I did choose to do two, two by two. Are there no twos in this set? This set is not well organized. Um, that I could do two, 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 or whatever. Um, I just want to verify that I think that will fit. So two, that was a three, two. It doesn't seem like there's not enough twos in here. It seems like you'd want way more twos. It says there's 60 twos in here. Are they just like dumped all over the place? That's all the ones. So we need two twos for indicators. Three twos for LEDs. Oh, come on. I mean, this layout does not give me the option to choose some other, you know, some other interconnect. There's just not room on the footprint versus if I did split them out. Okay, just trying to dig through the thing. Get some twos. Come on, buddy. So we'd have two of those, we'd have three, just these little, little babies, three of these, which I do have separate. And that would be, that'd be the whole shebang, right? Um, That'd be fine. For the this the the lighting side of the board could basically just be like this. The button side of the board, the way I currently have it, I only have one ground, like with the idea that I would sort of daisy chain ground around, and then kind of each button is individually connected. So I could do a bunch of ones for the button, or I could do like sets of buttons. 
kind of like upper lower upper lower or whatever some some strategy like that i think that's just what i'm gonna go with we could get fancy with interconnects but like i've already spent so much time on this and it doesn't really you know it's all at least it's not all but a good part of this is just for practice and building. but so I am tempted to be like, oh, I should lean into like good wire to board, a solution, a solution that I like and will like in the future. But um, so no. It's a pretty cute little board. I think I think I'm just gonna go with this. And we can just come up with however we want to do the well wire harnesses. So basically, like one idea that comes to mind is a um, the thing that's a little funny actually. I guess I could put these upside down on purpose because there's normally open and normally closed. The other, the other, 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 other option is that I do just decide, like, just break it out and make 11 connectors for the individual buttons. It's only three more wires than I currently have. It'd be 13, sorry, it'd be 13, it'd be five more wires. And what it would look like is just adding a ground, basically. So that would be 13. And then the buttons, you'd have no daisy chaining. The buttons would be individually connected to the board. So it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So could also do that. It's definitely more crimping. It's not a ton more crimping. It's only five more wires. Did have little crimps, like little spade crimps, but it had to be pretty teeny tiny for these. Otherwise, the wires can just wrap it around. Nice. Well, I did have some of those somewhere. Mm. Um, advantage of that is then, since I already chose to not daisy chain the LEDs, I would not have to daisy chain the uh, <coughs> power buttons either. So just like a little curious what that would look like. What would it look like? That would take this from eight to 15. So I think I'm gonna do a couple things. As long as we're thinking about, it's just why we're thinking. Let's just move <clears throat> this some stuff over, tickle. And then I kind of want to move everything on the board over. I'll like one. This looks very silly right here. Not smooth you. How are you like this? Okay, there we go. Can't click all these really easily. Okay, 
another draw point. So <clears throat> we got auto modded. Pretty AF. Wow. Sorry, musical robot. Okay, so we'd need five more pens here. It would be a little annoying to redo that, but not horribly. Wait, how did this happen? Huh. I thought, in my mind, I thought we had had to do that. Like, route it on the back. Well, we don't have to, seemingly. I guess because I've moved things around enough now. Okay, smooth. How do you like that? Smooth this out. Looks silly. Hmm, it's a little silly. I don't really like this little double jointedness, but. Or, like, I don't know why this double jointedness has to happen here. My, my opinions are too strong about uh, routing aesthetics. And I know that. And I admit that. Okay, this little net is absurd. Why why are you like this? This little this little jumble, this little bundle of joy. Why are you like this? Why can't you just go straight into this? Right? that like magic optimize button I'll make sure there's not like I guess the rules check would tell me but I feel like it's easy to end up with weird like overlappies or jumbly boys or whatever So what this would become, instead of eight, seven, would be two, four, six, eight, ten, and then one of them has three, so it's thirteen. Yeah. So it'd be a little weird because one of the buttons does have three. It's like a little triple. I mean, part of me does just want to like split it all up, split it all to pieces. If I split them up, I would have the option to do JST. If I wanted to. We'd have to figure out like, ugh, we'd have to like actually find the parts and figure it all out. But I, I think we could, I think we could. Um, okay, ah, we could just go with this, or do we want like individual wiring for individual? It's more wires in the box, so that is more like crazy spaghetti. But it would be rainbow spaghetti, so maybe we like the rainbow spaghetti. Be five more wires.
I just kind of honestly don't know. It means swapping this with five more pins. So one, two, three, four is kind of cutting a little close next to that. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And that's with you no know, spacing. If we want spacing, it's a whole other whole other ball game. How annoying is the days of chaining gonna be? Really not too bad for the buttons because they're all screw terminals. Do I have little spade connectors that are tiny in there? <clears throat> I get it. It's not tiny there. No, these are not. These are too big. Also, these are like in liney kind, not little through. kind. Well, heck, everybody. What do we want to do? <laughs> it's got to be a little messy on the opposite end, unfortunately. I mean, I could get, I guess, teeny tiny, like... They're not spade bits, or like a screw terminal connectors kind of things, like, um... But I need the... This, not hook, not ring. Okay, that is called spade. I thought spades were the flat ones. Um, but this is such a light wage, light, light wage, light gauge wire, like 28. Can you even use these on such? Such light gauge wire. I don't really like these. What was that rainbow cable? Like 28 or something, right? You got one of something like this? It's a really lightweight cable for this kind of connection. Oh, that's true. I think it's even potentially lighter than that. Exists like spade connectors for my eyeballs hurt. Maybe. 
routine technique. Because if I don't do that, I'm just like, it's kind of too bad. Two AWG ribbon. Rainbow. The kind I got was very light, which I interrupt respect. This does say 22. How much? 18. Hmm. Is this really 22? I don't believe you. High quality materials. Um, maybe I need to update, like, up my cable gauge for the button side. It's too big. It's going to be hard to crimp. I don't gauge those. It does say 22. So I can do 22. So it's 22, like the the happy medium here, where it's skinny enough for my Molex connectors, but heavy enough for my or like little spades. That's the secret. I should have gotten in the first place instead of the other one. Oh, well. I mean, that's useful anyway for, uh, so that's six pin, that's four, so six, there's five, I'm trying to figure out what the, <clears throat> I could have this tomorrow. I would like more than six pins, but maybe that's just not, uh. Not a thing we can have. That's 33 feet of four pin. It's 10 meters of five pin. That's 10 meters. I mean, I said it was on a roll instead of this. It's a little silly. But. This little cinnamon roll, but I guess that's okay. Hmm. I don't want a six pin on a roll, a thing that exists. Can I have that? Am I not allowed to have it? Are we not allowed to have nice things? Four pin on a roll. I mean, what's frustrating is really I need seven. There's six pin on a roll, but it's twice the price. A burglar cable. Six conductor. I don't need any insulation. So, I mean, I don't know. It does seem like this is the best option. Right. People love it. Be careful.
great. Wish it was not so pricey. And I feel like that's not. That doesn't seem too terrible to me. So yeah, annoyingly, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Like we just don't get pairs, which is irritating. Like, um, well, I guess you could say, I know it really is obnoxious. Not to be very long, I guess, but. Do have other black. Hmm. I'm trying to think of like how I would want to break this down given seven buttons. Oh, the colors matter tremendously, but I definitely don't like to use red and black for data. So this gives me four non red. So I could just cut an extra length of that and strip off the red and black and use it for something else and use the black for one of them, I guess. I only need, I don't need a tremendous amount. Yeah, okay, let me go with this. I think we go with this. Let's order this. And then, oh yeah, we need some kind of 22 AWG spade. Terminals. Do this cool search thing. 22 AWG. I guess. Well, these are almost what I want. 14 seems like way too much money for that. I'm gonna pay like four dollars and one cent. The ones I have are definitely, yeah, the like this kind, the kind that mate. Amazon is bad for this, but it is a way to get it fast. I want to crimp them. I want 22AWG. I want spade. I want. for one, it's for 50. 
deal. It's more like a bad deal for me. And this is for, this is for one? A pack of one. Three dollars for one. I mean, honestly, at 22 AWG, that is, I'm, uh, we can just wrap it. It's not great, but. I just feel like these are not good prices. Weird, because this is the style that I want, like this style of crimp, but I don't see that style of crimp for spade kind. Are there for hook kind? Is hook kind any better? Well, I don't know what we're looking at anymore. I would have thought that was less common. I guess I could do ring kind. That seems annoying. Oh, well, Chucks, what are we doing? I'm on Discord message. Oh no, Trackland. That's sad. Chat GPT is down. Okay, I think I'm gonna risk it and just get some 22 AWD cable instead. I have a bunch of cables though. They're just not in pairs and I kind of want pairs. Ugh. Oh, I'm so oh. I mean, I don't know. Ribbons of 22, which would be cute. But that seems like a useful thing. Out there. So I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna plan to. on one end and just bare wire in the screw terminals on the other, I guess. And then I will just jumper ground around the world. <sighs> Which I think will be not that big of a deal. Okay, does that mean this board is done? It might be done. Why do my eyeballs hurt? Um, add the cart. Go. Bye. Proceed to checkout. Go.
purchase. Buy now. Okay, well, hopefully it's not terrible. That was a silly roll. Okay, so then what do we think about this here board? Do we like it? Are we done with this board? One more breathing room. Boop. Come on. Boop. Boop. Something feels weird about the positioning of the transistors relative to Maybe that really is just where I had them. Okay, I need a sanity check. So, ground, you definitely ground. You're definitely ground with the USB connectors up here. You're definitely ground. And ground needs to go to the buttons. It also needs to be the source of both transistors. And then each of the LEDs gets a ground. It gets just connected to ground. Each of these buttons goes 26, 27, 28, 29, 24, 25, 18. Over here, we deliberately skip pin 13, and we have 12. We have 12. We have 11. 12 and 11. 12, 11, 10, 9. D6, which is pen 9. There's a GPIO 9 also. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's a little confusing. But I went with their labeling. So that's SOC D25, D24, A3, A2, A1, A0. And then over here is USB and then D12, D11, D10, D9, D6. The drain on the MOSFET is, uh, just comes from the light, from the, from the lamp. So source is ground and then gate, sorry, that's drain, yeah. Gate is D12, D10. So I don't know. It looks right. The main thing is it's missing is a fun logo. It's really, really sad to not have a a cute logo on this board. It's a shame, in fact. How do we get a cute logo on this board? It turned out to be a huge hassle, unfortunately. Um, okay, save you. There's all kinds of tools to try to do it. It just sucks. It's like actually very surprisingly, weirdly difficult. The tools are not, not straightforward. But I want one. as is, even though it's not cute enough. So we would need Gerber export. Okay. Oops. 
What is it? JL. JLC PCD. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. Gerber file. Purple. Cost two dollars extra for purple. Outrageous. Okay. PCBs are borderline free. Shipping is six bucks. I mean, it's just it's not very expensive. What if I get purple though? Still a bargain. Problem is, is this purple gonna get, look good with the pink? I don't know. The yellow isn't. The yellow is what I would really want. Good blue. This is ludicrous how cheap this is. Okay, so I don't know if I should just order this now and get it over with, because otherwise I'll just drag my feet forever and we will never see this board. Cute. Okay, the white on white, at least a little bit, a little bit questionable. I kind of like it actually. I can probably change the silk screen. Oh, it's cute. It's pretty cute. Only six bucks. I'll probably just do it. But what color? What color do we get? That's weird, because I did white, and it says it's black silkscreen. But in 3D Viewer, that was... That did not seem to be true. Purple gets white. <clears throat> we could do that as a kindness to... Uh, to life is yours. Shout out, if you will. And the black one would be kind of cool. That's really if black is the safe answer if we have pink. Try the group movie. Life is yours is not around. We don't have to get purple. silk on the bottom. I guess that's fine. Still, I've not answered questions like, how do we want to plug this in? How does any of this work? Why is anything anything? You know, fun questions like that. You know, I mean, strain relief or anything built in. What I'm imagining in my mind is that this gets screwed to a little 3D printed module. And then that 3D printed module is screwed into the the doodad, you know? Get that doodad in there. Should probably either buy those cute little inserts that you melt in with the soldering iron. That would be kind of cool to do. Maybe we'll get some of those. Or just screw into the plastic. I think this will look nice with this cute pink board on top. I could be wrong. I think we're gonna do it. We're gonna get this. Let's order it. Let's go. I think everything else is default. Let's just maybe try to not accidentally show my address on screen. Maybe. It's kind of funny that you can only get a minimum of five. Like. Definitely. I mean, it's two dollars. That's great, but I definitely do not need more than that. Um, okay, so sure. Check out. Do you know who I am? JLC PCB. You do know who I am. Why did it make my shipping go way up? 
Oh, because it's still defaulting to some... You can get 350 shipping. I won't see it for several weeks, but it's very cheap. But I'm gonna do this one. And pay eight bucks. It's crazy. FedEx International? Yeah, I'm not paying more than $10 for shipping. $8 for shipping, or $6 for shipping, I think I can manage since the merchandise itself is uh, so inexpensive. It's a little cheaper for the global standard direct line. It takes it from seven, I mean, it's, it's a dollar more. I'm just gonna pay the dollar. Pay directly. <gasps> a PayPal fee. They're charging me a PayPal fee, but they don't charge a credit card fee. It's pretty weird. That like extra makes me not want to give them my credit card. If they, if they let's charge extra <laughs> to use PayPal. Why would they do that? Coupons. I don't know if my coupons are available. I wonder why I can't use any coupons. Why no coupons? Oh, it's okay. Guess I'll pay the 60 cent fee. Highway robbery. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I don't really feel emotionally ready to order this, but we're just gonna do it. Cable my running over this thing. Actually running over the canvas. We go. We go fun hobby. Oh, guys, we well, were pretty close on the guts of this thing. The stand and base, I do not know what to tell you. This PCB is so simple versus some of the previous ones we've done, but oh well. I didn't put my name on it. Oh well. I didn't put my name on it, I didn't put the date on it. I wish I'd looked at these other ones. Oh well. That's okay. Maybe I'll order a, a board revision. If I can figure out the the way to put logos and stuff on it, which should not be as hard as it is. Okay. I think I'm done. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Rendered senseless. Kyle. Binary, of course. I've got to think about keywords. I gotta, like, I'm still waiting on all my computer parts. And I still haven't ordered a GPU. But, like, reviews are out tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow or Tuesday on the new AMD GPU. So we'll see. Okay. Anyway. Bye friends, thank you, and I'll see you next time.